you've been using a lot of that uh, how to talk to little kids uh, so that they'll listen. You've been using a lot of that on me. I don't want to read this book, Amber, and see our interactions in there and, re- <laughs> and feel immediately attacked. Uh, I feel attacked already. Uh, so so I, I don't know how com- I don't know how comfortable I am with your selections today, Amber. Uh, I'll, we'll, we'll circle back. We'll get back to that another time. It's okay that you're feeling that way, Ren. People. Oh my God, you're doing it now, aren't you? <laughs> there it is. There it is. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. Welcome to the online trainer show. I'm Ren Jones. I'm the new audio <laughs> production engineer. Uh, we just struck a deal. Uh, we were paying an exorbitant amount of money. I offered to do it for $5 and a pack of Skittles. So I'm now in charge of all audio. Enjoy this exclusively Ren Jones produced, not in any way Amber Reynolds involved production of the online trainer show. You guys are in for a treat today. Um, feeling good. Uh, the, ar- the arm feels good. Uh, I think I can go six innings uh, uh, for, the, for the fans this evening. Um, and, and as usual, we're going to talk about things today. So I know you like that. Uh, Kettle says hi, by the way. Uh, so <laughs> we're happy to hi. have you here <laughs> on, on the online trainer show. Jonathan, you look enraptured with, with, with di- you know, super I'm important watching a video. I'm watching a video that Carolina just posted up on her Facebook. And I'm oh, concerned. Yeah. I'm concerned at her form. <laughs> Oh, she's, yeah. doing a, she's doing a single arm bent over row, and she says, yay for PRs. But, you know, she's not initiating the movement with her scapula. <laughs> right. It's, it's a problem. And I'm sh- yeah. I I'm think we you- know now why the right trap is a little bit higher. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I'm giving you the finger in my mind. I am giving you the finger right now. <laughs> Don't stop there. Uh, go all the yeah. way with it. So I'm glad I'm glad that you touch on that actually because I wanted to talk about this whole thing about posting ourselves like on social media because it's such a vulnerable place. Like, am I gonna get criticized for my like I know Jonathan is joking right now, but for for real, like it's an actual thing. Like, is somebody gonna come at me because I'm doing things wrong? And the way that I kind of like learn to make my peace with that is that I'm showing people snippets of my workout. This is not an instructional on how somebody else should do things or what they should do or anything. I'm showing snippets of what I do. And if I get screwed up because my form is poor for myself on the third round of doing this heavy thing and I'm already tired or whatever, Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Like that's, Mm -hmm. that's on me. Right. So So I don't know. My favorite, my favorite experience of this was I posted a photo of me looking all buff and tanned and hot and stuff like that. (laughs) And Everybody's like, "Ooh, you look so good. Ooh, it's too bad you married." And like everybody said that, like everybody, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and one person, uh, nobody said any of that, by the way. Uh, but that's what that's what they said in my mind. But one person who's like, who's like a reasonably well-known like personality in the fitness industry, made fun of my legs, and I'm like, first of all, first of all dick first of all (laughs) this is one this is one photo of an awkward angle where like it's a it's a snapshot and it's like a bad angle photo like clearly second of all my legs have never been an issue because I'm Eastern European and short. So like, if anything, <laughs> like I don't even need to train my legs. Like they're going to be tree trunks. Third of all, you dick, like really, <laughs> like, like you are that unbelievably insecure about yourself that you are doing everything that's wrong in our industry by making fun of somebody else's legs. Like really? Here's- my favorite me? story, my favorite <laughs> personal story about this was one year I was with my kids at the pumpkin patch, at the pumpkin patch. Yeah, the pumpkin and patch, I was grabbing course. like this, this massive pumpkin. And I, I was kind of, you know, I was joking about like awkward deadlifts, like, you know, lifting pumpkins or something like whatever. Right. And this dude, I am not kidding. Like this bro dude actually goes, and he's like young lady. He called me young lady to start with. He's like young lady. That's not the proper form for a deadlift. And I'm like, 
I'm in a freaking pumpkin patch with my kids. Do you understand? It was a joke. Like, it's like, what are you anyway? But that's like, that kind of stuff is going to happen. Is that going to stop you from posting content and, you know, showing yourself? No, it's fine. Keep going. But to have it as like another like esteemed colleague doing it to you, you're just like, <laughs> yeah, that's a whole like I get it. Like, suck. like you, you brought yourself to PP. And you knew that that was going to happen when you were at the PP. Like, that's what happens. That's what happens at the pumpkin patch. Like, anytime you're at the pumpkin patch, you're just rife for people to make fun of you of how you pick up pumpkins. I mean, we know that. But I just, I just the like internet, that there was a pumpkin we patch We thought the story. internet was a safe space. Like, like the pumpkin right. patch is clearly not a safe space. No, we thought the internet was a safe space. You thought it was wholesome. Yeah. It is not. Mm -hmm. the pumpkin patch is just a source of judgment. Uh, most, most, if you think about it, the mentality of someone that goes to a pumpkin patch, they're already judging the pumpkins. Uh, you're just an extension of that pumpkin judgment at that point. That's you know? right. That's uh, right. you've, you've been, you've, you've, yes. you've set yourself an environment ripe with comparison. I feel yeah. like you brought it on yourself. If I, if I'm being honest here and Jonathan, <laughs> I apologize to that, about that comment s several times now. Uh, you didn't have to bring that back up on the podcast. <laughs> Uh, I thought I thought we discussed that in private and we were okay. Now apparently, <laughs> I'm the only person that's moved on. Uh, so I guess back to couples therapy we go. Um, so I don't like the fact that you guys interrupted my amazing announcement of my my new my new position here as the audio uh, producer for the for the podcast. Yay! Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you, Keto. Thank you for halfway clapping for my fictitious announcement. <laughs> <laughs> you're on this this audio production. We're going to talk about amazing things today. Uh, I don't I don't want to foreshadow this. You know, like I don't I don't want to set the bar too high this early in the podcast. But I'm pretty much guaranteeing an amazing show today. Like I I put I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put my foot down right here and say this is going to be a standout show. So if you were considering not listening further after after a riveting story from Jonathan Goodman about his legs and an equally enticing story about Keto picking up pumpkins. Just hold your horses. Like, stay where you are. Because this, this thing's about to take off like an Elon Musk rock, rocket ship. By the way, Jonathan, how's your Dogecoin doing? How's that going for you? Oh, I uh, sold that. I sold that junk. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I felt I took like a loss. I, I took a loss. Uh, took a loss? But I did okay. not take as much of a loss as I would have taken if I had held on to it for one more day. Let's leave it at that. It could it could have been lost year. Uh, My AMC stock, though. Thank right? you for asking about that one. Yeah, how's your AMC uh, stock? I'm, I, am, I, am, I can now retire oh, as, a all right. successful, all right. as, a, as a successful, profitable meme trader. So nice. I lost on Dogecoin, but I, I sold 50% of my AMC holdings. Very nice. Very nice. And um, made back enough now that it made up for all of the Dogecoin losses. And very good. I'm profitable on the AMC, and I still hold 50% of the AMC. Oh, so, very nice. And I'm, and I'm, not, I'm not buying that Dogecoin junk anymore. So like oh. now I can say for the end of time. Mm -hmm. that I am a uh, successful and profitable meme trader and I can actually do real work again. Very basically. good. Very good. So now based on this, can you get me like uh, discounted tickets to Black Widow? Comes out on the 9th of July. I'm a Scarlett Johansson fan. I really like to see that Marvel movie. Like what, what's, your, what's your area of power there? Like can you give me like a upgrade popcorn or anything like that? In, you know, that's... Uh, no. No, okay. I can't right. do any of that. Very good. sad. Good talk, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, you know, I I don't know that I completely uh, like the fact that you bet my yearly bonus on Dogecoin. Uh, I'm expecting the same Christmas gift that I got last year, which was oh, there's effectively no nothing. there's no yearly bonus for the PTDC. Yeah. The PTDC okay. bonuses right. are all based on profitability, and all oh. of the profitability has been wiped out by cryptocurrency. So I apologize <laughs> to everybody who works for us. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing left. Nothing left. And you're getting paid in absolutely worthless internet money for the rest of the year as well. <laughs> that and Casio watches. Yeah. 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 Casios flow like wine. Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, interestingly enough, I, and this probably won't be interesting, which is why I started it with interestingly enough. Interestingly enough, I was just listening to the previously aired podcast uh, where I, I believe we were talking about. Um, 
uh, not competing on social media. Uh, you know, not not playing the influencers game. I didn't hear all of it. I took a short walk, and then when I came in the house, I turned it off. Uh, but that that seemed like it was a pretty good episode. Like it it seemed as it, like when I cut it off, it seemed like it was building momentum. Uh, you know, so I'm I'm eager to go back and listen to that. I just I just want to say a thank you and and just great job. Kudos to you guys uh, for for your just consistent excellence in this format. Uh, you guys are just you're building legendary status, and I'm just I'm happy to be here alone for the ride. You know, I just you know I'm like the guy that plays saxophone for Ray Charles. Like I'm not the actual genius. Uh, I just I just keep the song. I just make the song sexy. Cause you need a little sax, right? Uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not good without saxophone. You know, I'm just there in the background. You know, you don't really notice me, but if I'm not there, it's noticeable. It's like that's what background saxophone is like. You're like nobody comes on, nobody listens on. Oh my god, listen to that saxophone. That's not what happens. However, if you hear the said song in the absence of saxophone, you think to yourself, well, there's something missing here. Uh, and I am that uncategorized thing that you may think so. I'm just happy to be saxophone to you all's Ray Charles, uh, and I hope we don't all go blind doing this. Um, so we've got we're going to talk about books today. Jonathan, you know about books. You've you've had some <laughs> you've had some interaction with books in your lifetime. Um, I've written eleven of them. Thank you for you, that you've up. written books. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to I don't want to put your business in the street. Uh, but you've read books before, also. Like, is this also correct? I have um, so many books at our house mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that we actually don't have wall space for bookshelves anymore. Mm, it's, okay, that's it's, a, lot, um, a lot of books. We have a box right now in front of our house that says, free, please help yourself of books. And it's, uh, it's, it, this is actually there right now. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that some of the books are gone and people taking them. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm at the point now where the books have all of our bookshelves. And by the way, when I was away in Mexico, we had like many new bookshelves made many like, many we shelves multiple many bookshelves shelves. you're there a man was, of many uh, shelves there were 12 new bookshelves that's a lot of bookshelves oh that were at our house and yeah. um and all of them are, are stocked full and not just full across width wise mm -hmm. but the books that could stack on top right it's now like stacked on top almost yeah. full as well Every nook um, and cranny. All of this to say that I am unbelievably wise and well read. Uh, so, what's your question? <laughs> yeah, we learn that here every episode. Yeah, what Jonathan. do you want? What do you want? Yeah, I got, I got knowledge. What do you want? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna hold off on that knowledge for a second. Yeah, okay, you know, good. Keto, you're always flaunting your books, ta ta taunting us with your co color coordinated background of books. Ooh, so you're in, yes. a, you're, you're into the books. Uh, and, and, a re and a record skip for some reason. Um, no, what was that sound? Yeah, what was like, that? Oh, like, it was the laptop when I moved it on the desk. It kind of like screeched. Oh, yeah, yeah so that was weird. Sorry. Like a record scratch. It's like like the movie that starts out, you know, somebody getting thrown out of a building and it stops and it's like, hey, you're probably wondering how I got here. Uh, well, that's a story. <laughs> for, like, that's, that's, what I, that's what I thought when, when your record skip played. Uh, but but you've got books. So, Kato, you suggested some, some very wise and appropriate books for us here on the podcast in obviously in between vodka shots. So, yes. you know, so we know that you're, you're a reader as well. Amber probably deals with books to some capacity. As I understand, she, she helped, she helped to adjust the online trainer Academy, uh, lit literature. Uh, no, let's, the, give, let's give her full <laughs> credit. She did most of the work. She, okay. Mm -hmm. She basically did the work and Jonathan signed yes. it as, as per usual. Um, so we're all very familiar with books. I mean, and, you're not and, wrong. <laughs> we, right, right. That's 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 not an exaggeration. That's instruction no. that I'm giving you, uh, entrepreneurs out there. Go get yourself an Amber Reynolds. Um, oh, and Amber, it was your birthday yesterday. That's a big deal. Happy birthday! You Yay. know how did how did the, how did the birthday turn out? Do you did you feel good? How do how do you feel, Amber? Do you feel just as young as you did last year? Younger, better? Are you faster, smarter? Can you dominate the pitch? in the European challenge of soccer. Like, what, what are you, th how are you feeling? I don't want to put words in your mouth. I, I feel good. I mean, 30s right. are better than in my 20s by far, so. All right. 30s? Well, you told me you were turning 18. <laughs> <laughs> someone needs to explain Nate, because he's almost four. So. Well, that makes, that makes it's possible. I'm just well, saying. It, we are in the okay, South, so. Amber. Let's not, let's not play those games here. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> we are in the Carolinas, my friend. It's not un- unheard of. Speaking of, Jonathan, you put a book, uh, a box of books outside your house down here, and, and it, we're gonna, somebody's going to burn it. Uh, that's that's for sure. Uh, it's just what we do in the South, uh, not to be stereotypical. So, <laughs> so we're talking about books today. They're like, look, firewood. Uh, and, then, and then we set the books on fire to make to make sure that we don't walk by and catch any learning. I don't want to catch no learning. Uh, what happened to get around in books? Um, but in okay. any case. No, no, no. I had to say, because I read today and I thought of you both. I read today about uh, there was like this infographic with like the states in the United States with the higher incidences of, of STIs. Yeah. And of course, North Carolina. South Carolina's Carolina. ringing high. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Arizona absolutely. should have beaten us for the record. They yeah. always what? The worst. Arizona should have been at the bottom of that list. <laughs> Typically pretty high four, in four. Arizona. Alabama was right there too. <laughs> yeah. In, in, in Arizona, it's the heat, but it's a dry heat, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so in any case, so... We're going to talk about books today where you can get learning uh, and and we're going to give you sort of the books that we that we believe collectively. These are the books that are really going to push the needle for you like this. This is going to send you over the top. Uh, you know, sure. Sure. The online trainer academy where you can coach clients responsibly and profitably, uh, you know, with our level one certification uh, that can be found at online trainer dot com slash academy. Sure. You can learn. A, uh, I'm sorry. OTA. Sure. You can learn a lot there. But there are some other books that they can learn from that will that will just push that. It'll take you from average person to superhuman uh, in terms of your your online training. So. There's a lot of categories. There are categories like like uh, psychology. You know, you got categories like exercise programming. Business is a great category. Um, oh, having com- having conversations. You know, having difficult conversations with your clientele. Your own personal mindset. So we're just gonna we're gonna reach into that big box of Jonathan Goodman books today, uh, and other books that are not Jonathan Goodman books. And, and we're just going to give you some insight, some things that we recommend. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to start because I'd like to start. Is it okay for me? Normally, I don't start, but I want to start with the books. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm going to start with, obviously, Fifty Shades of Grey uh, because <laughs> most, if you're in this coaching business, for some reason, you derive a lot of pleasure from pain. Uh, that's the only explanation for why you do this full time. Uh, you know, it's enjoyable, but not in a way that a well-adjusted person would enjoy things Uh, and i'm not i'm not sex shaming here like we we don't we don't judge people i'm just saying that's going to be your first stop on the list of books number two for me uh and this ironically this is a jonathan goodman book and i i promised myself i'd never give him accolades in environments where other people could hear me uh i'm gonna go against that today and say that as a new coach i really enjoyed ignite the fire that was a great book about just the overall understanding of how you fit in the realm of personal training, fitness, and wellness space. If you've not read that, it gives you great basics in terms of uh, how you see yourself coaching clients, fundamental aspects such as how close in proximity you're working to where you live, you know, things that are worthy of your time versus not. It's a great instructional book for understanding sort of the concepts of being a well-adjusted and not totally pissed off all the time personal trainer uh, so i highly suggest that maybe as a starting well a starting point after 50 shades of gray obviously but maybe as a starting point to your coaching career i'm i'm going to i'm going to toss it to the person who wrote that book jonathan the jonathan goodman and i'm going to say jonathan what what book comes to mind for you that's that's going to be really helpful for the the trainers out there who are listening intently uh to to this podcast right now oh man i can't i almost can't even say that shit without without laughing uh that are listening intently to the, it's, it's funny when you hear it out loud um that are listening intently to this podcast what would you suggest jonathan you're yeah, a smart I have, man i have 11 suggestions uh, <laughs> oh wow shock you uh, <laughs> It, it's, uh, didn't you also write 11 books, Jonathan? I'm, I know I'm grasping oh, the straws here. That's a, that's a funny, oh my goodness. <laughs> what, what a coincidence. A, what a, what a coinky dink. Um, 
What a winky dink. Skin of a winky dinky dink. What a winky dink. Yeah, I have. I have two suggestions that I uh, prepared for this podcast. To, oh, thank uh, you so much. Thank you so much. Thought about as you were talking. Right. Go and, ahead. Um, the first one is one that I actually haven't read for years, and I should revisit. But it's more like the philosophy of training, and it just it it helped me figure out a lot, kind of how I wanted to train and what approach I was going to take with. Um, with my personal life and, and my fitness, because I think, I think a lot of the reason why I love the gym so much is because of the parallels to life and, mm-hmm. you know, struggling and progressive overload and pushing your comfort zone and overcoming and um, simplicity works best over everything else. And all of those themes are so important in everyday life, too. And mm-hmm. um, the book that really hammered that in is, is um, Dan John's Never Let Go. And that was a book that I read many, many, many years ago. And I remember I was kind of like transitory i didn't quite know what i wanted to do uh Mm -hmm. in the career and stuff like that and and i just remember i remember being really absorbed by it uh it's it's a series of essays he's dan john is like kind of a philosopher right and so um yeah never let go by dan john it's an oldie but it's a goodie for sure and uh and that's one and then the other one that i have is um a book i've recommended time and time and time and time again uh it's called the psychology of money and um Mm. it's by morgan housel I read it. It was the best book I read last year, and I've already read it twice this year. Really? And it is, uh, by my estimation, the most important book that I've ever read. Really? Wow. And it will, it's not like, it's not going to give you like investment advice. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not that type well, of We get that from you, Jonathan. What it will do, yeah, that's right. <laughs> what it will do is it will help you understand and, and build your own personal philosophy of how to manage and grow or maintain or think about money. And this is something that we all should have been taught way more than we, we, when we were younger. We all should have been taught way more as we prepared for our career. We all should be taught way more on an everyday basis. And we are. And it's a serious, serious problem. And as you will find out as you read the book, it's not necessarily about making as much money as you possibly can. It's about understanding what you want to get out of life and figuring out where money fits into that and then building that plan and executing that plan. Similar to fitness, mm-hmm. right? Do you want to be the most shredded person on the beach with a six pack? It's like, that's fine if you do. There's nothing wrong with that. You do you. But you have to understand that there are bills to be paid if that's your goal. And, and the same thing with money. It's a matter of, of understanding and being okay with various risks and appetites for risks and um, what you want to do and not want to do and particularly who you listen to for advice. What game are you playing? What game are they playing? Am I going to listen to somebody who's day trading idiot meme stocks for advice? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you want to be a degenerate gambler. Right. And that's fine. That's what I do. That's why I have this beard. That's why I haven't gotten a haircut in a long time. That's why I'm pretty sure that everybody that I love is going to leave me at some point in the not so distant future. But like, Probably if so. that's the game. No, but I mean, all jokes aside. If you were joking? You don't, you don't listen to financial advice from somebody who has different financial goals and risk appetites right. as you do. And you can only figure out what luminary, what experts, what books to read, what, um, what investment advisors to listen to, all these types of things that are going to impact your life probably way more than anything else you do, Mm-mm. right? You, you can only figure out how to, who to listen to if you understand what game you're playing and, and, and how you want to play that game, and then you go search out for experts doing the same type of thing as you. Uh, you know, good advice could be good advice for somebody else and not you, mm-hmm. and that's okay. And so those are my two books. That makes sense because I tried the booty shorts that Keto referred me to. Didn't work <laughs> as well for me. Uh, so that's, that's, that's sage wisdom. I wish you had said that before I bought the shorts. Uh, but but can, potato, can I just potato. say... Can I just yes. say, yes, impressive. Thank you, thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> uh, also, never say that again. Now, the psychology of money is that is that Morgan House House sell who sell Morgan House. Oh, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce okay. his name, but yeah, Morgan. That's Housel. all right. 
I just needed to download it because you know I'm not I'm not gonna sit on this great advice. I've I'm already on the uh, the uh, Amazon what's their thing Audible. No, don't yo, down- don't don't buy it. No, don't buy it now. Though wait till we get the link in the show notes because that's gonna be the Amazon affiliate link. Oh, and well, so we'll, that, get, we'll get a couple. We'll get a couple pennies if you buy it well, through that. So. Well, this, this, this is disappointing on several counts. Uh, I'll, we'll circle back around to that, Jonathan. Um, and we we may get another book. You know, if you could do a little research, have a second book so the show doesn't stall if I have to come back to you because I swear to swear to goodness, like you're you're never ready when I come back to you. You're always distracted. Keto, you've got a rack of books behind you, very well I color do. coordinated. You know, I'm feeling like something from the blue section would be awesome. Do you have any? You have, you have any blue? <laughs> you shop for books in Keto's house, like like clothing. Uh, do you have anything that'll match these red sneakers I have? Anything in the blue? But, but seriously, you know, you've given us some great book suggestions, all of which I've ignored on the podcast since we've been. Yes, uh, you know, know, it goes one in one ear and out the other. But at the right. time when you mention them, I really do want to learn from those books. It's just <laughs> once Amber hits the button and turns it off, the feeling fades away, as as does my love for the people that I'm engaged with here. Uh, I don't really care about any of you after she hits the button. Um, so I don't think that's my fault. It's hardly my, my, my problem. But if you had to toss a book out there, what what's a good book for the folks out there listening? And, and, and could you follow up with why? I don't want to stress you too yes. much. Uh, you, so- all right, you're prepared. One book that I absolutely love and I really recommend is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. And Mm. she is known for the Eat, Pray, Love book that was turned into a movie with Julia Roberts and all that stuff. So, so, but, but Big Magic (laughs) is kind of like her, uh, her formula for living a creative life. And it's actually fantastic. I got one of the best pieces of advice out of the book because one of the things that she says is that, you know, we, we have all this big talk about following your passion. And mm-hmm. when you don't know what your passion is, that sounds really dumb because you don't know what you're supposed to be following. Like if you haven't figured it out yet, what you're passionate about. So her advice there is follow your curiosity, whatever mm-hmm. it is that you're curious about in the moment, follow that and go with that and, and keep pursuing it because that's going to drive you into the things that you're actually passionate about. And then eventually you become, you know, the expert on the topic or the, you know, the, the person who understands whatever better or the person who's capable of doing this thing better than anybody else because you followed on your curiosity. And that is so straightforward and so simple and such a no nonsense, I guess, way to life. And it has a very, uh, what, what really kind of like clicks with me is that the entire book is about living life in kind of like in a playful, free manner, which as you can get a hint, you know, from knowing me a little bit, right, that right. absolutely resonates with me. So, so I really love that book for anybody looking for a little bit more freedom and enjoyment and creativity and flow and all this kind of stuff. That book is a good one. Yeah, it sounds pretty much on, on brand for you. Keto. Now, this this is not the same Alyssa Gilbert. That's an actress, though. That's that's a different person. Is that no, the same she's person? No, not an actress. Okay, no, okay. No, right. she's a writer. Because, because I know Melissa Gilbert as Laura Ingalls Wilder from Little House on the Prairie. No, so. this is Elizabeth. Gilbert. Oh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Gilbert. Yes. Oh, it, I've learned a lesson not to stop ignoring you on the podcast when you talk. <laughs> uh, you know, as, soon, as soon as I say share with us, Keto, normally I have a button on my belly. I push that and my ears shut off automatically. So I'm going to stop pressing <laughs> that you. button. Uh, Amber, not to be outdone, I mean, you've contributed to a book. You you did a whole thing. So we know that you're incredibly well read. Uh, you're, you're, you're 17 now. You just had the birthday. Uh, so you're no longer our brilliant 16-year-old podcast producer, which I got to say, it sort of diminishes the legend. Like, it's less impressive at 17 than it was at 16. At 16, it sort of meant something. Now it's like, that's basically a college student now so it's not that great but i'm sure you have a great title for us like what what do you suggest what's your suggestion for books i'm gonna go off uh, a very different genre that i actually found helpful in a weird kind of way so apparently- first of all i need you to simmer down amber you're a little bit too hype for me oh, no. i can't under- <laughs> at this at this level of of at this level of enjoyment at this level of pleasure i don't think i can receive it can you just bring it down a little bit okay just yeah. simmer down Take that trouble out of your voice. I don't have a lot of in between. All right. Okay. Go ahead, then. Uh, You had a birthday. I'll allow it. 
Thanks. Yeah. So there's a parenting book called How to Talk So Little Kids Will Listen. And mm. I swear, this is the exact same way you approach people. Yep, it's really good. Yep. It is true just dealing with people as a whole uh, yeah. and making sure like people feel heard and giving them choices, but like choices within the choices that you want them to have. And like, it just makes sense for adults as a whole, not just kids. So I would strongly encourage that whether you have kids or not. Um, and then to piggyback off of John's uh, money book, The Simple Path to Wealth, uh, mm -hmm. is a really good one as well. Uh, I feel like, especially when we talk to our students about like their freedom number and coming up with, you know, the, the categories that they should be, you know, looking into, um, for their, uh, essentials, like retirement mm -hmm. is always missed. Like that should absolutely be, you know, something in there, your emergency savings and all of that stuff. So it just makes it really simple to, to consider what type of financial situation that you can build for yourself. Um, so that would be another one that I would strongly encourage. And, and that was the, the path to the simple path to wealth. I've, I've got it open path. here. I've never, I've never seen that one. J L Collins is the author, but the foreword is by Mr. Money Mustache. And if you've ever read the Mr. Money Mustache blog, it is fantastic. What? <laughs> That's I'm amazing. Googling that right now. What is it? It's Mr. called Mr. Money, Money Mustache. And it is, it is an unbelievable personal wealth blog. It's just, really? the guy is just brilliant. Yeah. I've taken um, so many notes. Um, all right. And, and I'll be it's reading good this. Stuff. Yeah, you, you, you enjoy that, Keto. We only got a few more minutes left. Uh, start, <laughs> get, get started on that blog. Uh, I wasn't paying attention to Amber because I was thinking of a joke to say uh, after she was done. That's how my mind works. But I also do realize that, You've been using a lot of that uh, how to talk to little kids uh, so that they'll listen. You've been using a lot of that on me. I don't want to read this book, Amber, and see our interactions in there and, <laughs> and feel immediately attacked. Uh, I feel attacked already. Uh, so so I, I, don't know how com I don't know how comfortable I am with your selections today, Amber. Uh, I'll, we'll, we'll circle back. We'll get back to that another time. It's okay that you're feeling that way, Ren. People oh, my God. You're doing it now, aren't you? <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> you're doing it now. Damn it. Your feelings, your feelings are valid, Ren. Let's oh explore God. what this oh, brings up for you. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh I am, that is that not is okay. It's a bad day to be you, Ren. Yeah. It's a bad is, day to be you. That is not okay. Uh, I feel violated in front of the Dude. dozens of people that are listening to us right oh, now. Oh, okay. We do Go oh, on, go on, Carolina. Before we move on, yes, before we move on from the topic of little kids, I want to say that this past <laughs> weekend I got to spend time with Jonathan and Allison and little Calvin. Oh, Calvin came by? Get, wait, wait, wait. And guess what? Little Calvin now calls Jeff Uncle Mayor. And that is not the cutest freaking thing ever. I don't know what it is. He's like, Uncle Mayor. Uncle Mayor. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. This sounds very much like the characters on uh on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. No, it's, or, Paw or... it's basically Paw Patrol. He called. He, it's based off of off of Miss off of the mayor from Paw Patrol. Oh, is yeah. that right? That's that's, that's right. amazing. It was actually really funny. So uh so yeah, Carolina and the mayor um came to Allison's family's got a cottage, and they came and hung out with us on Sunday afternoon. Um, apparently Barry didn't need any supervision, you know, so. <laughs> um, we let them run hog wild every once took, in a while. Was, took Barry off the leash for the weekend, <laughs> but it was, it was so funny. So Allison's family was there with us. So her mom and dad and brother and, uh, and, and her mom, we were talking about, cause they, they were over for dinner and we were talking about dinner and her mom was like, do we know, do we know how many people are coming? Does he have? security with him or <laughs> who are we how many people are we like be me i'm the security <laughs> caro caro is like, the, i'm the muscle in this couple okay? it's the mayor I'm of the barry security. he doesn't have to bring any luminaries with him he doesn't have an entourage we're good he's, oh gonna, bring, he's gonna be wearing a salmon colored t-shirt and we're good <laughs> Fine. Due okay. to the population of Barry, if he brings any security with him, the economy collapses from half the population. <laughs> That's right. uh, so, <laughs> the, the, the Barry infrastructure. Who's going to work the phones? Who's going to work the phones? Though, right? 
<laughs> Who's gonna plow the field? <laughs> hey, Jebediah, what are you doing? Just filing down the tools to make the work harder. Um, so, thank, thank Wait, goodness. I have another book. I got another book. You, Jonathan, Ooh. you know I, I challenged you to have a second the book, and and well, you have I delivered three books. I said you, three you, books. Oh, did you? I only well, had two books. This is my. I'm third. just I'm amazed by your ability to deliver on this episode of the podcast, Jonathan. Please share with us yet another book. Un unsurprisingly, this one is right up my alley. Um, <laughs> on on kind of Amber's theme of like, actually, if we learn how to talk to children, we can speak to adults much better. <laughs> <laughs> and good, uh, yeah. and it's it's amazing. Like the best negotiators I've ever met are people who have multiple kids. Mm -hmm. They just mm -hmm. you just have to like. And so mm -hmm. uh, anyway, this this book um, it 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 really is actually probably one of my all time favorites. Is a book by somebody named Robert Fulgram, and it's called mm -hmm. uh, Everything All I Really From. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm going to start that again. All I really need to know I learned in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard of this one. I haven't read it. And uh, and it's just it's just fun. It's just a series of essays and stuff like that. But there, it just shows you. It's like really when you break it down, like life is actually pretty simple. It's like these are the things I learned. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. <laughs> Clean up your own mess. Don't take things that aren't yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. Flush. Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Live a balanced life. Learn some and think some and draw and paint and sing and dance and play and work every day some. Take a nap every afternoon. When you go out into the world, watch out for traffic, hold hands and stick together. Wonder. Remember the little seed in the styrofoam cup. The roots go down and the plant goes up and nobody really knows why or how, but we're all like that. Like it's like that kind of stuff, right? Oh, very, nice. very cute. So, yes. yeah, Secondary cool. title is the autobiography of Catalina Bermudez because that sounded very. <laughs> that, all, that all sounded Wonder. like a day in the life of Catalina. Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Go dance around in your backyard. I don't know. Yes, Close exactly optional, right? right? <laughs> oh man, that's so instructional. Thank you for writing that, Keto. Thank, Keto, thank you for sharing sharing your life with us. Um, <laughs> So I mean, it, and of course, we can't forget about the best book of all time, Atomic absolutely. Habits by absolutely. James Clear. Absolutely. <laughs> game changer. It's a game changer. It's it's obviously obvious, saved the obvious best for last. Troll play, obvious troll play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Save the, save. Speaking of trolling, uh, we've got to give a shout out to Jim Ghazali. Uh, we we right. spoke eloquently on the podcast uh, several episodes ago. Uh, about our dis Jonathan and I about our disdain for the Gildan mm -hmm. shirt, the organization <laughs> as a whole, uh, not just their shirts. What are, I don't I know that they make any other products, but they're probably I crappy. They also go by garbage bag. I yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah, the other thing they make is garbage bags. And when you're wearing one of their shirts, you can't tell the difference between the two. Like, do I have on a garbage bag or is this a Gildan T-shirt? Uh, so, you know, based on based on our eloquent disdain for Gildan, uh, a a a certain OTA level two graduate uh, by the name of Jim Ghazali, if that is his real name, uh, <laughs> took it upon himself to send me a, a thank you card for a referral that I sent him, uh, which uh, obviously was a very nice thing to do. I'm a gracious person. We all know that. I'm amazing. Uh, nice. you, you guys have met me. Um, and, and, and in addition to the thank you card, he included one gray Gildan t-shirt, which is <laughs> it's the worst color that Gildan makes. Uh, it's just the gray t-shirt. Uh, no, sent, actually, the other one. I feel like the, the other, other one, one was the yeah. worst color. And, he, and yeah. he sent me one construction worker slash prison inmate orange Gildan shirt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it looked like the, a square pylon. It looked like a square pylon. <laughs> I could see the color through the plastic uh, of the wrapping that it was put in. Uh, because of the because of the 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 neon orange, the radioactive orange coloring to the shirt. It was, it was uh, very, so it was very well done. It was very well done. You know, well well played, Jim. Uh, Especially because again, if, your video your video of it was like you were so excited of getting. I was excited. Like, I got I, this in the mail. Oh, this. Oh, sends fitting it all. It's gonna, it was going to be awesome. Like, I knew great, what a great guy. You're talking about how good of a guy he is. Super you're nice. About how excited Super you are. Nice guy. And then it comes out and you're yeah. like, oh, that son of a. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a crap shirt, basically what it is. Two crap shirts. 
Jim confided in me the confusion of his children when he went to the local printing company and ordered two blank Gildan shirts from him. <laughs> his kids were like, aren't you, what are you going to get put on it? He was like, nothing. Yeah, who is it for? Ren. Uh, so, uh, so <laughs> Master it's Troll. just nothing. And yeah. He I has could, so little time. This dude right, runs Iron right, Man's. Right. He right, has a yeah. full-time job. He has a thriving online training business. He, he's a mentor. Two little kids. They have a baby and the whole nine yes, yards. Yes. Like, how does he manage to troll other people on top For of God's sake. Place? He's a mentor no in the Online Trainer Academy, for God's sakes. Uh, and still he found the time to appropriately troll me with with, with what is the worst constructed t-shirt ever known to man with the <laughs> itchiest tag. You know, I put the shirt on for a second and once again, my butthole puckered. Uh, so I'll not be... <laughs> I'll not be wearing those Gildan shirts anytime in the future. Uh, so show notes can be found at onlinetrainer.com slash podcasts. Uh, you've been treated to a most excellent. Uh, I, I told you guys early this thing was going to trend positive. I told you I predicted it early um, and I'm, you call me Nostradamus. I knew where it was going. And, and I think that we delivered. We delivered on, on the did. promise. of Yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll we'd love to have you back for another episode. If you tolerated this one well, uh, chances are you don't have an allergy. Uh, so feel free to come back. Check with your medical professional. Feel free to come back to another another enriching uh, and entertaining. That's what we do, John, here. We enrich and we entertain. Uh, we most people, we, we enrich and we entertain. And most people can't do that. But that's that's what we, we do that here twice a week, weekly. Uh, and uh, <laughs> does anybody want to say the thing that ends the show? Anybody? What thing? Yeah. What's the, the, thing? the thing that we say that when they when we when it stops the thing and then they play what's stuff. The, anybody anybody want to say it? I'm not Keto, sure do you want to say it? You you were low energy the last time we asked you to do it. You you know what, Keto? You owe us. You owe I us owe for you. your for I'm your energy low right. energy a dramatic request one. for the song. Uh, we need ready? a big one this time. Are you Keep ready? Going. Jim do it. Tommy Timber. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>